Yo, yo, yo. What's up, guys? It's Rich the Car Guru again, okay? Um, by the way, check out my Instagram. It's uh, at Richie B Kid. Now, my IG is mostly a mixed bag of stuff. It's like a deeper look into, you know, the personal life, the vet, the kids, day to day stuff. Check it out. But set your expectations to low and then uh, set them lower than that. And then just turn them off. Just don't expect anything out of it, really. Um, most of the pictures on the Instagram have funny stories below them, so read up on those. Check it out, follow, post racist comments, whatever you guys want to do. And again, my Tesla buy, sell parts trade group on Facebook is there too. In case you want to buy a salvage car or some parts, I'll post a link up here. Um, I'm going to be ranting a lot in this podcast because I have many emotions, you know, in my body that I need to release to anonymous people on the internet. So just be aware. You know, I have a lot in my brain, and I could spread this out to 10 parts easily. But the uh, only thing about multi-part series is that the first is most popular, then people lose interest slowly, and, you know, by the time I get to 10, I'll probably have 8 views. So, let's start with the comment of the week, and this is by far one of my favorite comments of all time. I don't think I've ever been this entertained by a comment until now. I, I laugh pretty hard at this. I'm, I'm going to paraphrase it for you guys. So the majority of the comments on uh, a previous video of mine was, you know, love the channel, man. Keep up the good work. She's gorgeous. Can't wait to see what you do next. It's fascinating. And <laughs> this is my favorite comment. I'm going to paraphrase. You're disgusting. Messy. You're a slob. Don't blame it on the truck. You could have a bus and it would still be full of trash. Just like your entire existence. This is the worst channel I've ever come across. You're reckless. You're a waste. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, that was funny. I, I love that comment. Who hurt you, man? Seriously, who hurt you? You know, just know that I love you and everything in life will be okay. Okay? It's all going to work out in the end. Don't worry about it, man. It's going to be cool. So, my brother in law, he asked me, you know, that my page is getting a little bit more traction if I've received any death threats as yet. And I laughed at him. I'm just like, why would anyone threaten to kill me? I'm a good guy, you know what I mean? But now I get it. It's I, I know it's coming, and, I, and I'm embracing it. You guys are going to kill me, totally. Um, hey, why don't you change the format of your show so you could, like, do things better? Like, they're hard to follow and stuff, and what are you doing? It's dangerous, and you should follow my steps instead because I'm like an engineer and stuff, and I took three class. Okay, buddy, I get it. Okay, yeah. Hey, buddy, guess what? This is my hobby, okay? I'm not getting rich off of this. I just want to tell as many people as I can that a guy like me with little to no common sense can do cool stuff with Harbor Freight tools in my basement. Anyways, uh, also as an update, remember in episode three where uh, one of my buddies got stranded at my house? Well, here's his car cut in half in preparation for its repair. So the car had to be back halved so a new rear could be welded on from a donor vehicle. And today that car is running and driving and looks great. There's not, no photos of it. But close your eyes and imagine a black Tesla. Yes, that's what it looks like. Maybe the owner wants to chime in. I know they watch this, so hey, feel free to jump in. Um, now, I left off opening the pack and me complaining about how I didn't listen. Uh, and, and I really didn't want to remove the wiring harnesses because it was really, really hard. Wah. This is what I realized that I really, really got deep in here. I mean deep. Uh, I had to remove the wiring harnesses. I know I had to do it. And just look at the corrosion and all the all the green in the connectors. Those all had to be thrown away. This was the real scary part. Taking out the HVAC system and the associated wiring harnesses, my word. I mean, look at this mess. And I had to throw all of this away. Look, this is what I was up against. It, it's uh, Just look at the salt. You know, and, and this is the small shelf uh, that the airbag and air suspension module sat on top of. Look at that salt buildup. You know, this is all under the uh, HVAC system, and it was it was a mess. You know, I don't, you know, I, the thing is, I don't know what this guy was thinking. Like, how did you manage this? Okay? You know what? If you know a guy named Brian that lost his Tesla in a flood, you judge him, okay? You scratch your chin, and you judge him silently. All right? I saw the photos, buddy. Something isn't adding up. It didn't, that didn't look like a parking space, okay? 
I don't think that car was just there, okay? I think that car may have been driven in that water on purpose, you know? Not like fraud, but they he may have misjudged the, the, the depth of the water when he was driving it. It's got, he had to have been driving it, you know? I'm just saying. I'm not an accident scene specialist, okay? Okay, who cares? All right, so now all these things I had to throw away. I knew that if I purchased this from Tesla, these parts that I needed, it'd be $10 billion in parts. And no one has these harnesses for sale because when people strip these cars down, they either throw the harnesses away or they just take, you know, the, the important stuff. They take the battery and the drive unit uh, or any autopilot hardware. So, I mean, it looks like I have to go on Copart again to find a donor car. So let me just inform you guys about Copart. And you got to watch your back on Copart. Copart is a scary place. You got to know your stuff. Now, Copart's the place where you, you look to buy, you know, previously uh, salvage vehicles or vehicles that were previously in an accident that were purchased back from insurance companies. And you look at six to 12 pictures of the car and decide whether or not you want to spend 20 grand on it. Now, the motor arguably is the most expensive car of any car. And Copart cars are sold as is. So if by chance there's a picture of the car with the hood shut, you know, everyone assumes, okay, there's a motor under there. Oops, guess what? You pop the hood, you just got the car, no motor. You've been had, you lose, you get nothing. Good day, sir. Okay? And that happens all the time. People people are just are, are, are shysty. What they'll do is they'll they'll remove the batteries, they'll take the cells out, and then put the battery shell back in so it looks like there's a battery in it, but all the modules are out. That's a $20,000 screw up. That's fraud. And if you go to Gopart and say, hey, I didn't get a, you know, I, what's going on? I, I didn't get a, a battery. They say, hey, guess what? I don't have to tell you, man. The car sold as is. You know, so I spent a few weeks analyzing every car in Copart. Um, and, and just another thing to keep in mind, uh, over the time, the most of the air suspension equipped cars lose their air and they fall flat in the ground. Uh, coil suspension cars generally sit at the same level. However, if a pack is removed, which is about 1,400 pounds, they they could sometimes tend to sit a little bit higher. So just note that. If the car sits really high, you got to scratch your chin on that one. Uh, some cars have their rear motors removed too. So just make sure you see rear calipers in the cars. Um, guys sometimes just drop the entire assembly out and they'll they'll just they'll just run with it. I'll cover that in another vid. I think I'm going to make a video of how to buy a salvage Model S. might help a few people. Um, but you know what? Even after knowing all those things could happen, I bought another one. You know, I bought another car. Uh, I found one. It it was it was 14k for the first car. Another 14 grand for the second car. That's twenty eight thousand dollars. All right, twenty eight thousand dollar roos. You know, dollarinos, dollar dues. You know. Who gets that reference? Throw it in the comments. Uh, but that's okay. You know what? Keep listening, and I'll tell you why it's okay that I spent almost thirty grand on two non-working cars, which was a captivating conversation to have with my wife. By the way, I don't think I have anything worth thirty grand, and now all of a sudden I have two cars totaling thirty grand, and neither one of them work. All right. So I'll be referencing two cars in this update. You know, Dolores, the black-footed car, and the white P eighty-five car uh, that she got her parts from. I never got a name for it. Um, hey, Rich, you know you could get a CPO car for under 40 grand now, right? I, I know that. Okay? I spent a lot less than 40, by the way. So, just to jump around a little bit because I have ADD. Uh, so, I'm super busy packaging and, and shipping out parts from the flooded car, uh, Dolores, since I have a, uh, a little downtime um, because, you know, the car is mostly disassembled at this point. So, uh, I got to start recouping the costs on this thing. You know, I just can't have the parts that I don't need sitting around, you know, not making money because, you know, the longer I wait, the, the less the, uh, the car, the parts are worth. So here's where everyone needs to listen up. Okay. And I'll do a separate cost breakdown video about this because I know people will rarely watch the entire video and, and comment before watching the whole vid. I'm going to rant again. Why is that? Why do people watch 90 random seconds of the video? Type a comment, hit submit to that comment, and then stop watching the video to see if their question was answered. You know? Why? 
okay. Anyways, so uh, here's where the vehicle parts stand right now. Um, the drive unit, boom, sold. I sold 12 good battery modules from that flooded car. I sold the front driver's seat. I sold miscellaneous interior trim panels. So I recouped a decent amount of cash already. I got $9,000 for those modules. You hear me? Nine grand. So I'm looking at only paying about five grand for the first car. So total for two cars, I'm in it for 19 grand. You know, so 19 grand for two cars, that's not so bad, assuming I get one working. You know, uh, I sold the drive unit, the, the broken drive unit for three grand uh, as is. So now I'm down to 16 grand for two Teslas. You know, and part of me is kicking myself in the butt uh, for not asking some mo for more for that drive unit because now more than ever, I really think that that drive unit was fine and not flooded. But I'll rant about that later, I'm sure. Um, so to getting rid of the modules was easy. I put them on a pallet, shipped them out. Um, the the drive unit was was uh, pretty straightforward. The uh, the guy sent someone sent a tow truck driver to pick it up because they weigh about eight hundred pounds by themselves. And the the dispatcher called me and said, "Hey, you know my guy is coming out to pick up that drive unit. You know he'll be there around nine p.m." I'm like, "That's awesome because um, I didn't take the axles out yet, so that gives you enough time." So they call me back at six, and he's like, "Hey, I'm here." I'm like, dude, you're, you're literally three hours early. He's like, well, just give me the axles too then. I'm like, no, you're not getting the axles too. So I just ended up ripping the axles out altogether. Um, and actually one axle came out really easily. The second one didn't. Uh, and that, some guy gave me 120 just for the axle broken like that, which was great. Um, so that was a quick recap of some of the costs that I've recouped so far. But... I have to go see the car in person for the first time. So it's uh, it's about an hour away, and it's at my, my buddy's tow yard. And the same guy delivered the black model S, delivered this one as well. But the, the cars are so heavy, and, and due to the issues we had last time, he actually left the car at his shop. And I said I would pick parts off it as I go along, just to make the car lighter for its eventual return to the house. Uh, so I removed the goal was to remove the battery of the motor, and on separate occasions so that the car be lighter and we had to, you know, uh, lower it and, and, and bring it back to uh, to my house. So getting as, as much weight off the car as possible was, was the goal. Um, and, and this is kind of a turning point because, you know, there's a lot of questions. Because quite frankly, the, the, the donor car isn't hurt that bad. And as a matter of fact, I don't think it should have been totaled at all. So once I start moving the broken pieces to this car, there's going to be one big question. Do I repair the donor car with the with the flooded car parts, or do I swap literally everything over from the donor car to the flood one, which would be, you know, 10 times the, the, the labor, my own labor. And, you, you know, as I started working on the car more, uh, these are the conditions that I have to work under. Um, the it, it was at my friend's tow yard, so I had to set my exposure super high on the camera. This is pretty much an complete darkness you know that overhead light makes it seem a lot brighter than it really is but it was not bright in the least bit uh the only electricity i have is the inverter built into the bed of my truck so i can run an led flashlight and maybe a drill but nothing heavy like a shop vac to take out some glass that i've been stepping on so i started going over the car and you know there's there's mice that that chewed up the wiring harness you can see they built a little nest but they chewed this up pretty bad and you know, these are just some of the things you have to look out for. When you get something like this, and you, you can't send anyone out to, 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 to look through the whole car. This is what you have to expect. Um, you know, and, and no one's going to tell you this. So the, the next day I decided, you know what, I'm gonna actually going to give the old owner a call. And he was a, uh, he was a yacht salesman and left his business card in the car. So I, I end up calling the guy back, and we, and we chatted for a bit, and he said that the car saved his life. He got into an accident uh, with an SUV, and the, the SUV's frame rail was bent over about 12 inches. And, and his car, well, you know, it looks like it does there in, in, in the pictures, but it's bad, but not as bad as the SUV that he hit. So I call him to see if he had the key, which he did not, and we talked for another 10 or 15 minutes or so, and then he sent me packing on my way. So... Um, 
so back to the car again. The, uh, the, so the, the one of the biggest problems with working on these is the 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 hex screws for securing the passenger and driver seats. They were they were completely different, but someone explained to me as to why because they they you need different. It's it, it, in a side collision you need the uh, proper breakaway uh, forces applied so that the the, the occupants could be saved. Um, but they're completely different, but it was a pain to take apart. And they they stripped in 30 seconds. I was only able to get one of them out successfully. And the, the, this is tiny. These are tiny, and they're massively over-torqued to add insult to injury. So this is the passenger side right rear screw, completely stripped. And I, I didn't think this day could get any worse. But I did get a, an interesting phone call from the previous owner. Uh... He said his wife was doing some cleaning, and she actually found the key, which is great. But for for some reason, I don't know why I thought this. I thought he would just kind of send it to me for free, and you know, throw a little cash his way and cover shipping. But you know, I was all kinds of wrong. He said he wanted to send me this wall charger and key for six hundred and fifty dollars. And the the thing that got me was that he wasn't using either one. He hadn't had the car for a year. But it's only when someone expressed interest in it he wanted to jack the price up. So, you know, the, the key was literally in his underwear drawer, and you know, I, I just ended up paying him the six fifty. But I was pretty upset about it. So, uh, I'm gonna trash him a little bit here. So, if you if you know a yacht salesman somewhere in the Carolinas, just just punch him in the face for me because it's it's even if it's not the same guy, they should all pay for this. Um. So, now this. This coming weekend here, it, it marked a thread, it marked a, a, a huge turning moment in this thread's history because this is, we're coming up to the, the, the next stage of the uh, the car rebuild. So for the past, you know, few months, yeah, I've covered a ton of ground considering, you know, I can only work on it a few nights a week for a couple hours at a time. But in the last three months, you know, I haven't installed a single part on the black flooded car, like none whatsoever. So... The, this whole project hasn't really started the rebuild phases yet. So, you know, I, I've been streaming along for four episodes now, but it's it's pretty easy to, to disassemble one of these cars. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to do it. Uh, all you need are the right tools uh, and the guts to tear into one. However, rebuilding is a completely different game because this is where the pain and suffering actually begins because you tend to forget, you know, where something goes, where's that screw, this doesn't line up anymore, and miscellaneous things like that. Um, but I know where a lot of the things go, but over time, like, you just kind of forget, you know, you forget where a few screws go, you might lose a few things. And, uh, some of the times I've, I've been noticing, I've been forgetting to take photos in the heat of the moment and, you know, stopping to document takes a long time too. That just adds to the time that, that you need to, to, um, disassemble the car, just setting up camera angles and, and knowing what to say and then just editing parts out that you think might be relevant or irrelevant. So, um, yeah, I over the last few days, I made a big push to put in serious work on the rebuild. Uh, I took a day off and put in about four hours to remove uh, that stubborn front passenger seat that I was telling you guys about earlier. And, you know, I was planning on putting a few other hours by myself again on Saturday. Uh, it just so happens that this guy actually messaged me, a guy that's been following the thread messaged me and said, you know, Hey, if you ever run out of your, you know, your tireless energy and wit and end up needing a hand, this WPI student would be happy to help. So it, it's good cause I needed the help. So I took him off on the offer and yeah, I'm glad I did. He, he, you know, he, and, and yeah, sorry, I got to cut you guys off for a second. Um, I took him up on the offer, you know, and I'm glad I did because the guy rented a car and drove an hour just to see my silly little project and lend a hand. And when I realized what he'd done, it just blew my mind because, I mean, let's be real here. The last time I drove, an, I rented a car and drove an hour for anything. I was probably trying to get late or something. And this guy just kind of did it because he was just interested in the project. You know, it's just, just unreal. Um, well, needless to say, you know, we got to work right away. And in a matter of a few hours, we got the uh, drive unit out, the high voltage battery, uh, the driver's side main harness that goes to the battery connectors. Just wow. This is all in a tow yard with no access to a lift. Okay, just jack stands, wood blocks, and basic hand tools. You know, and I, and I couldn't thank him enough. So uh, I bought him Burger King. 
and he seemed pretty happy about that. You know, Rich takes care of his people. You know, what can I say? Uh, anyways, thank you, kind student. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you'll be thinking of me when you graduate from school and actually purchase the Tesla as opposed to cobbling one kind of working one from two non-working cars. Anyways, so I'm going to stop it right here. Uh, so send this podcast to your friends, like, share, subscribe. and Oh, and guess what? You know, we got some donations. You know, damn. You know, thank you guys. It's very nice of you. Thanks a bunch. You know, it's it's always appreciated. Um, you know, just, you, you know what? I'm going to go a little bit further. I'm going to go a little bit more here. Uh, here's some pictures before I end this. Uh, this is what the inside of the P85 donor car looks like. Uh, I'm mostly taking pictures at this point for documentation purposes, but it looks kind of neat. You know, there's glass literally everywhere. And the, the kind of thing that sinks about that is that uh, I couldn't attach my shop back to my truck because it just pulled it pulled too much voltage from my truck. I have a, um, a smaller inverter. Oh, sorry. That's built into the back of the truck and it can only push out so much and the shop vax wasn't having it to back up all that glass. And this is something you don't think of. When when these when these cars are smashed, when the glass is, is smashed and there's glass everywhere, this is a tough call. It wreaks havoc on like your wrists and arms. It's it's a pain in the butt to work with. Even on your knees, if you have to squat in the car, it's it, it does a number on, on your knees and, and your legs. But um it's a mess. You know, it, it's a mess in this car. Just like my truck. Huh? Remember that? I brought that one back. You like that, huh? I brought that one back. All right. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.